What's going on folks? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Accurate Engines here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today I'm going to show you something super trick and hopefully save you a couple bucks. And if I do and you got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to answer all the questions I possibly can. And if my video helps you at nighttime while you're sleeping, open up that old laptop, put on one of the Clayway super playlists, probably tips and tricks would be great. Turn the volume down so you don't have to listen to me yammer. Let them videos play from front to back. That's how we get paid our super two tenths of a cent per few. But anyways, remember if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. And in this situation, it's not only about the how to do something, but it's also about the why you're doing it. So. I'm going to show you some stuff on the back of these Chevy Traverse, Buick Enclaves, Saturn Outlooks, GMC Acadias, and this particular one is on a GMC Acadia, but don't worry folks, if you own any of them model vehicles, this will certainly help you if you walk out one day and you notice a little bit of coolant dripping out the back, this video will help you out. So what we've got is a GMC Acadia that we're working on. Yes, I know this is a Chevy Traverse that we're looking at right now, but I've already fixed this car and... It's gone on down the road. And these newer model vehicles, they have front and rear air conditioning systems. That also means they have rear heat and rear air conditioning. And you can certainly look back here because this is a very common cause for air conditioning not working. They'll create leaks back by the evaporator. But this video is about when you walk out and you have a bunch of little coolant dripping out the back here, or it looks like water or whatever, it's dripping out of there. Well, your lines probably have some corrosion on them and you need to rectify that. It's super expensive to replace these lines from front to back. So I'm gonna show you a way to splice into them lines and do it super cheap and super easy. So we'll get going on this. So if you ever come out to your Chevy Traverse, GMC Acadia, Buick Enclave, Saturn Outlook, and you've got coolant like that, never fear Spidey fans, Clay is here and he's gonna show you how simple this is and it's not that big a deal. We need to be cautious that the coolant is not too hot when we start to work on this. So make sure the vehicle is cool before you start this procedure. So if we look up underneath here, we can literally see this coolant dripping down. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this wheel and see where the leak is actually at. Taking a jack, we can jack up the rear tire here and then remove it. Once you've removed your lug nuts, if your wheel still won't come loose, take your foot and go backwards and kick on the outside of the wheel, and that thing will pop right off usually. Now I'm going to simply reach up and pull back on the splash guard that's covering the line. Pulling back our splash guard, we can see that there's a bunch of leaves and debris that's collected up underneath there and a bunch of dirt. This has been leaking for a while. That's mud. Now if we look... We can see it dripping right there at that black plastic fitting. And because of the dirt and stuff that's collected up underneath there for over the years, it's caused it to leak. Okay, so we've got a couple screws that we need to remove. These are Torx T20 and that looks like a seven millimeter. So we're gonna remove a couple of them. We don't have to remove the whole splash shield, I don't think. But for right now, I'm gonna start with this area right here and remove the screws and see how far I can get it back. It just seemed easier to remove the 10 screws that were holding this down along with the one seven millimeter here and remove it out of the way, hopefully, so we could get at it and also film us repairing it. Along with the screws, there's a couple little pushies up in here. I believe two, maybe three. We need to remove them as well. Okay, pick your poison for removing these pushies. They can be a serious pain in the butt. So for this particular one, I took my screwdriver, pried it out a little bit, and then got my pry tool underneath there. And hopefully I should be able to work it out and get that out of there. Once you get that part out of there, you can pull out on the plastic and get the other piece out. Now I'll grab this one out of here. Okay, so with that off there, we can definitely see that it's dripping from underneath this, this holder right here. And we can also look and see that there's some, you know, corrosion right here. So more than likely this has a little leak too, but it's depressurized from right here. 
and not causing that to leak. So we're gonna end up cutting this line right here and we're gonna replace it with the heater hose and we're probably gonna cut it up inside here. So what we're gonna need is a heater hose repair kit so we can cut all of this bad portion out and just hose clamp it and put it on. I'm assuming it's this line. It could very well be this line. We'll take this off of here and find out. Now in this particular vehicle situation, the air conditioning is not working and I'm here to tell you that more than likely it's either these rear lines are bad as well or the evaporator up there if you have a dual air conditioning system. It's not the only thing that could be wrong with it, but I've already checked the rest of the air conditioning system and everything seemed tight. So my presumption is, is that back here, it's probably got a leak. Now with the 10 millimeter, we're gonna remove the nut off of there and we'll be able to remove the plastic cover and expose exactly where our leak is coming from back here. If we take a screwdriver, we can quite simply pop this off of here, but removing the bracket nut, uh, it's not really necessary, but it did help a little bit. It's actually the upper line that's leaking. I'm surprised it's not this bottom line. No, nope. and you see they've rubbed together over time and it's cracked it right about there, somewhere in there. Well, we can see as I expected that it was this bottom line. And when we take our finger and rub it across the top of here, there's just the smallest of pinholes in there. And it's probably from rubbing on that bracket down there and causing it to drip. We'll fix her up. So the, for the rubber portion of the line, we can just cut that with a knife or any, you know, hose cutter or whatever. For the metal portion, you can cut it with a sawzall, a Dremel, use a line cutter. I'm gonna use a line cutter. It's generally the cleanest. Put a catch pan underneath it, just so none of your beloved pets come and lick up the sweet tasting coolant. Now with the line off of there, we can surely see exactly what happened, how it rubbed through, and you can see the potting of the metal. You know, this is aluminum. So it's got some pits and stuff inside there. Well, we're not gonna ditch this piece that we took out of here and we cut it up there for a specific reason. We're gonna use this as the connector. Now, of course, we can go down to the parts store and we can pay three or four bucks and get this. But if we have a couple hose clamps, we can actually use this portion of this line. We're gonna cut it and we'll use this as a connector right there to connect our hose, which is right here. And this is five eighths hose in this situation, but it could be three quarters. And we'll put some bevels in this so it doesn't pop off. We'll put some bevels in that so it holds the hose on there relatively easy. And we've got a simple, free, fairly quick fix. Now that we've got it cut, we need to mushroom it a little bit. So we're just gonna take a ball peen hammer and give it a little bit of mushroom on each side so we can use it inside our heater hose and hold the heater hose to this fitting. One of the ways that we can do that as well is we could take a punch that's a little bit bigger than that, jam it down in there. Also, once we get it mushroomed a little bit, just for some extra goodness, we'll go ahead and take a file, file it like this, just to give it a couple ribs so the rubber has something to grab onto. Doing the same thing on this side, except for with this side, we can grab it with a pair of pliers and hit it with our ball peen hammer or whatever accoutrement you wanna use to get a little mushroom in that so the hose doesn't fly off. Obviously, we're gonna use hose clamps on this situation and it's not really too much of a worry, but we'd rather be safe than sorry. Hitting it with the ball peen hammer on the concrete gave it a nice little bevel. And that should suffice for a good connector. Okay, so we can kind of see where we push that in there. Basically what we want the most is that the clamp has full coverage and we have enough sticking out to stick inside the other hose. So right there should be about perfect because this is where our line stops and this will give us a nice clamp right there. 
We've also got this file down quite a bit, so it'll have something to grab onto, and I hit it with a hammer and got a little bevel in there as well. But I'm really not all that super worried about this thing falling off of here. I just wanted to make sure that I showed you folks the right way to do this and, you know, what'll be given the most successful way is the way that I told you. Okay, so the intention of these brackets back here are to not have these lines move and rub holes in them. Obviously, it has a little bit over time. So when we go to put this back in here, we wanna make sure it doesn't touch any of these harsh corners right here and rub through our holes prematurely. So we're gonna make sure that we zip tie this up. Now, more than likely, this line is gonna cause the inner fender liner to bulge out a little bit, but that's what we get for saving, you know, how many ever hundreds of dollars and how much ever time it would have took us to do this line itself from the front to the back. Or imagine what we would have had to pay the dealership to replace this line. They certainly wouldn't repair this line like this, but even if you went to the hardware store or the parts store and you bought connectors and hose clamps, you might be out $5 and have a very good solid repair that you'll be able to remember in the future and you'll always know what to check back here. So I'm gonna take a bunch of zip ties and I'm gonna hold this and get it as tight and as close to the body as possible without it moving and without it contacting any of the edges and we're good to go. Okay, make sure that your hose clamps are not gonna contact this. This sharp edge doesn't touch this rubber hose right here or you'll create problems for yourself. So once I got one fixed, I realized the other one was still dripping. So I ended up making a little connector in there as well. Now, if you're worried about this stuff rubbing up against one another, you can just take an old shop rag or something like that, wrap it around it. And also the rag will grab moisture and you'll be able to see it if it does anything. But for the most part, this repair should last a couple of years and be just fine. We also want to make sure that we don't have any kinks in our lines just like that. So you may need to shorten your adapter hose if you have that situation like me. I may have went a little bit crazy with the zip ties, but this is solid and they're connected together very well. So I'm actually very pleased with how it came out on a budget anyways. You know, we could have spent the money and it wouldn't look like this, but with the cover over it, you won't ever see it. And I'm certainly for sure that these connectors will probably rot out before any kind of rot gets inside here to rot this out, because you can see a little cheese right there. But it's not leaking right now, so we're gonna leave it alone, but Frank tells me that these leak here all the time. So this will get us by for a while on a budget. Pretty much like it never happened. Now we wanna make sure that we have enough clearance in between our tire and our sidewall right here. We don't want it rubbing up against the side. So hopefully that video was helpful and you guys got that vehicle fixed and it saved you a couple bucks if I did. Remember to look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I'll be certainly happy to try to help you out. Next time you need an engine, look me up down here at Accurate Engines and I'll see if I can help you out. Remember. If anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. God bless and have the best of days.